Hey guys, Thunder E here, and today we're taking a look at gaming on the Galaxy S22 Plus. And why I think this might be a better gaming option than the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now, if you're going, that is blasphemy. Well, hear me out. But before you do that, go ahead and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification icon to get notified of our latest videos. And thank you for joining us here on the channel. Now, I also want to give a big shout out to our sponsor for this video, Morning Brew. One of the best places you can get your daily news without actually you doing any work whatsoever, and it's completely free. Okay, so we have the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus here, and we've seen gaming on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. But what is different between the Ultra and the Plus, and why do I think this might be a better gaming device? So we start off here, we've got a design that's very similar to what we had last year with the S22, S21 line, except of course you can see this doesn't flow all the way through. It kind of stops here, so it's a little different design language. In terms of size, you're looking at something that has a 6.6 inch display. It is an awesome looking display. And of course, again, we have Ichigo right here. So all you wallpaper lovers, I will leave that for you down below. Now, this is powered by the Snapdragon um, 8 Gen 1. That is the version I have here. Of course, if you're in the UK, you will get the Exynos version. And before anyone asks, I am waiting to get my Exynos device to see how it performs and compare that, of course, to the Snapdragon version. But this is a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 device. Now, it also comes with a 4,500 milliamp battery. And in terms of speakers, you guys have seen our speaker test. If you haven't already, there's a link for you here to check out the speakers on this device. Of course, the dual speakers to see how it stacks up and what kind of performance we actually get with it. That being said though, one of the things I do like about this device is the display. It's got a flat display surface. And granted, I do love curved displays, but I felt this felt really comfortable to hold. And as you can see, it feels very nice. And when you're getting into gameplay sessions, just being able to see the screen quite well. And also you don't have that rolling edge in any case, if you're using either side of the screen, I think that is a big plus. Now, the other thing with this device is the fact that it has a full HD plus display compared to a 2K display. And that comes in uh, to bear pretty well with this device in terms of gaming. But another thing you'll find is that when you go into the settings, you can change uh, from uh, 60 Hertz to 120 Hertz with the adaptive refresh rate, but you cannot change your screen resolution. It is just set at its full HD plus. There is no option to swap that out, which I just found quite interesting, but something to note. So you guys uh, like to see benchmarks. For me, benchmarks are not that important, but I wanted to start off with showing you some benchmarks here. And we're gonna go ahead and look at Geekbench first. And we'll start off with um, our compute be CPU benchmark. So that's the CPU reading here. And I'm gonna go into the S22 Ultra to give you guys a reference point. So you can have a good idea of what the benchmarks actually look like. Now, if we go here into our CPU benchmarks, you can see the difference between the two. Um, a little bit more in terms of the uh, single core score and a little bit more in terms of the multi-core score. Now let's go ahead and check out our compute benchmarks and see what we also get with that as well and see if there's a major difference. You can see the compute benchmarks are much closer. Again, this is a Snapdragon, H, uh, Snapdragon HN1, so we should see numbers that are similar. So another benchmark I wanted to showcase is from 3D Mark. This is the Wildlife Extreme uh, Stress Test. So this is a stress test that runs for about 20 minutes on the devices. And here's a very stark difference. You can see the stability levels uh, for the uh, 22 Plus is 76%, while for the 22 Ultra is 66% there. So it's more stable when it comes to running your games, it looks like. Overall, long period of time, you can see the graph here and the loops. And then our FPS range is slightly higher here on the S22 Plus, we're from eight FPS to 19, and uh, on the Ultra, it is six to 18. So again, you can see that there. Battery usage or battery consumption, you can see 50 to 34%, 84 to 74%, as you would expect, of course, with these devices. And we'll tell you why that is in a second. But before you start searching and wondering where to get that kind of information. 
How about you get your information, of course, from Morning Brew, which is a lovely newsletter you can actually sign up for free. I mentioned for free right now. One of the things I'd like about Morning Brew is the fact that this is a newsletter that is curated to meet your own needs. So looking at Morning Brew, you get your news on a daily basis, 20, uh, seven days a week, and it actually curtails it to uh, specific things that you're looking for, whether you're looking at market news, you're looking at tech news. Uh, and one of the things I like about them is that they've got news articles that are basically coined and phrased the best way. So they're funny, they're witty, uh, they are very innovative, and you can see avocado supply is browning pretty fast. And if you live like living in the Northeast like me, especially if you lived in Brooklyn, you know you love your avocados. But anyway, guys, go ahead, sign up for Morning Brew. It is free, use the link down below so you can get your own, uh, your own compiled news on a daily basis, and it should be fun. As we take a look at this device and we can see the numbers here uh, show a benefit to having the S22 Plus. Let's take a look at some of the games. So first off, we're starting off with Call of Duty Mobile, a game that, again, should run pretty well and it also felt pretty smooth on here. Now, in terms of the benchmark scores, we got us uh, 60 uh, frames per second, which is nice. And of course that ran pretty well. Call of Duty Mobile is a staple. It's just something that you should be able to do quite well. And you shouldn't deviate from those numbers. That's just what I'm looking for here with Call of Duty Mobile. So we of course are going to head over to PUBG Mobile. Now PUBG Mobile, we played at two settings. And as you know, PUBG Mobile is a game that a lot of people like to play. Some people ask me about 90 frames per second gaming. It just doesn't, it's not available right now. And again, I would have to unlock it with, uh, with uh, GFX tools, which I'm just not doing. That being said though, playing on Smooth Extreme was able to get solid 60 frames per second on, on PUBG Mobile, ran really well, and the performance was pretty solid overall. Now, going over to Ultra HD Ultra, uh, which is the next highest level set, settings here on PUBG Mobile. I was able to get 40 frames per second. Again, this is standard. Those numbers are standard and the same numbers I got on the S22 Ultra. So that is again something that I think is nice and solid and it works out well. Before we move on, a lot of you asked me to showcase gaming at 120 frames per second and there are not a lot of games that support that, but I did remember that Real Racing 3 does support 120 uh, frames per second and it runs really well on this device. It's smooth. Granted, my driving is terrible because I've actually touched this game in like maybe four years or so, uh, but it runs really well. You can get those 120 uh, frames per second with uh, games like that. So that is actually a nice big plus. Now, moving over to Black Desert Mobile. This is a game, of course, that we saw on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. We got uh, uh, frame rates about 42 frames per second. And it's quite similar here with, uh, of course, the S22 Plus, where we're getting about 43 frames or so. So in terms of gaming performance there, there is still a solid match. Now, when we move over to Genshin Impact, this is where we get some things that are really interesting and exciting. Now, we were able to play Genshin on here for a while. We played for about maybe 25 minutes, kind of matching what we, we got to when we played on the S22 Ultra here. But I want to just point this out. Just remember, this display is a Full HD Plus display, so it's basically a 1080p display. And that, that actually plays a lot to the numbers you're about to see. So with Genshin Impact, I got actually 51 frames per second playing for that amount of time at the highest settings. Now, you know, Genshin, you can max the game out to be capped at 60 frames per second. And if you remember the Galaxy S22 Ultra, we got 42 frames per second, while the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which I actually compared recently, go check out that video against the S22 Ultra, uh, we got 39 frames per second. So you can see here that the benefit, I think, of having a display at Full HD Plus goes a long way because you're not running at max 2K resolution or you're not trying to at least render that at 2K resolution compared to this. So we've got steady 51 frames per second, which is pretty nice when it was a game for quite a bit of time. And that was actually pretty cool. Now, when it comes to temperatures, uh, I was also surprised that my temps only went up to about 103 degrees. I didn't get anything hotter than that, uh, even though you probably what you saw on screen there was probably in the 90s or so, but 103 degrees was the highest temperatures I got, especially playing Genshin Impact. So that display, again, I think is my own key factor here in terms of temperatures. Now, battery life uh, gauge, I can't really give you a gauge because I was been kind of power testing on there. I will say though that because you have a 4,500 milliamp battery, 
be very wary of that uh, compared to a 5,000 milliamp battery in terms of uh, battery performance. But what does that tell me? It tells me that when you're going to game on the S22 Plus, you're gonna get a really solid, steady performance across the board because number one, you've got a display that is not a, a, a 2K display. You also have the same performance in terms of the Snapdragon um, 8 Gen 1. Uh, and you've got a device that you know a lot of people might definitely like because of more of the flat uh, panel. Now, of course, we did try out, of course, game streaming services like Xbox Game Pass and I use my GameStar um, controller here. This is the GameStar uh, X2 Type-C awesome controller. Works pretty well for this device. And uh, that played well, as you would expect. So game streaming services work out very well. Now, I will have to say that I'm impressed with what the S22 Plus does in terms of gaming. And a lot of, I think a lot of people will be impressed too. So. If you're that person that is a gamer, you want to get the new Samsung Galaxy device, especially with the S22 line, and you're thinking, I want to go all out with the, with the S22 Ultra, maybe. And I think this kind of proves it that the S22 Plus might be the better gaming device for you here than the S22 Ultra. I think that just makes a lot more sense uh, for a lot of people's gaming needs. And the fact that you're not gonna be draining as much in terms of performance uh, using this device over the S22 Ultra. So if you have, guys have any questions, any comments, let me know. If you wanna pick up any of these devices, I have links down below. And definitely go ahead and sign up for Morning Brew so you can get, of course, your latest news and information quick and fast. This is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.